today we're going to do a, uh, a quick video in relation to some cookware just to sort of give you guys a, a bit of an idea of some of the stuff that I use and uh, a few you know, sort of ideas for those of you who might be looking to upgrade your cookware and uh, want to have some some different things to try uh, we'll I'll just give you a quick presentation on a few of the the different items that I use and then I'll also do an, be doing another video later on uh, in relation to my barbecue equipment to give you sort of an idea of what I've got and what the different types of equipment can be used for. All right, guys, let's get on with the video. Yeah, so the first thing I will say in relation to if you're looking to upgrade your, your cookware, um, basically get what you can afford. Um, you don't need to get sort of anything too flashy. It's whatever you think you can use and whatever you uh, you can afford. So we'll go over a couple of the things that I've got and um, it might give you some ideas, some stuff that you haven't sort of thought about. Now, in relation to fry pans, um, I like the uh, Chef Inox brand. I use stainless steel um, frying pans for most of my cooking. Now, stainless steel can be a little bit tricky if you haven't used it before. People complain that their food sticks to it, that it burns, etc. Um, and that just comes down to a little bit of education around how to use them. So with stainless steel, the most important thing is when you put it on the stovetop, let the, the pan come up to temperature first. Let it get warm. Now, until you sort of get used to it, one of the things I recommend doing with your stainless steel saucepans is getting a little bowl of water and just dropping, uh, dip your fingers in it and just flick a few little drops of water onto the frying pan. When, it, if the water beads and sort of sits there nicely, then it's at the right temperature, it's, it's hot. Um, if it just sort of stays water and just sloshes around, it's too cold. If you drop the water in and it absolutely goes crazy belling around the pan, then it's too hot, so take it off the heat. Um, once the, the pan comes up to temperature, then add your oil. Once the pan's up, add your oil and then wait for that to warm and then add your food. The other thing with stainless steel is that you find, so it has a natural releasing point for food. So put your food in it. If you try and turn the food before it's ready, it will stick to the bottom. You won't be able to turn it. it you won't be happy with the results. So what you do is just wait and you'll notice when you pick the pan up and you sort of move it, depending on what you're cooking, or if you get the tongs or the spatula and put them under, it will start to, it will naturally release. Don't force it, just wait until it's ready and it will start to release. Um, the good thing about uh, stainless steel is that uh, they're quite easy to, uh, to maintain. They're a good solid, uh, good heavy uh, pan, good temperature control. And you'll notice that all of my pans as we go all have the uh, metal handles, the idea being that you can transfer it from the stove top straight into the oven if required. All right, so we'll go to the next thing. So the next one that I, I use that, that I like is I've got a copper pan. So this pan is copper on the outside and stainless steel on the inside. So these are quite a good little pan. This is a 20 centimeter one. And what I use this a lot for is presenting things like single serve omelettes. So some of you might have seen me uh, before make um, like one of my favorites is the omelette Arnold Bennett, which is the omelette with uh, seafood, usually some sort of white fish or crab or prawns in it, if you like, and uh, grated cheese. And then you put uh, homemade hollandaise over the top. And then you put it under the salamander or the griller and it uh, warms the top of the, uh, the hollandaise and browns it nicely. So when you go to somewhere like the Savoy or, uh, in the UK, which is where the omelette Arnold Bennett was invented, it actually comes served in one of these because that's just the right amount for a single serve. So what you do is you cook the omelette in a separate pan usually a, a, a non-stick pan, which is one of the few things I use a non-stick pan for now. You then slide it straight into here. You address it with your um, your seafood, if it's already pre-cooked, your, uh, your grated cheese and then your hollandaise and then slide it under the salamander from there. 
it browns in this it doesn't take very long and then you serve it up in this uh, it's just a presentation thing but look they're very sturdy pan i quite like them um really really handy and it's just a good little size so the next thing we'll go to is your grilling pan or griddle pan or grill pan whatever you want to call it um, i use this a lot it's great for steaks fish scallops uh, anything like that it is a really good versatile pan um, and chicken yeah if you're doing uh, the other night I did uh, homemade uh, chicken schnitzel um, and they come up beautifully in that pan really good sturdy solid pan so you notice I'm not covering saucepans today saucepans are saucepans once again I use stainless steel saucepans that's just a personal choice so this next one is a sawtooth pan so a general purpose pan so I use this saucepan quite a bit uh, once again it's by Chef Inox um, I use this a lot for reductions so if you're doing say for instance a hollandaise which you might use a, a white wine vinegar reduction uh, or a Bernays sauce which also has a reduction in it uh, or a Maltese sauce which is um, uh, you will reduce down some blood orange juice and, and rind that's a really good pan for that but you can do other things in it as well um, but as I said I quite like this one it's just a good general purpose pan once again stainless steel uh, very versatile okay so the next thing we're going to go on to is a saute pan so this one is its only use is for sauteing um, anything that you're going to cook in a sauce or uh, poach and liquid so if you're going to do poach fish or chicken uh, or anything like that I did also buco in it the other day in a red wine gravy that I made up this is the ideal pan very heavy uh, very robust it comes with a lid that's got vents to allow to, to help with the venting um, uh, I use this quite a bit really really good handy handy pan just something else to keep in mind now the last saucepan that I want to sort of cover off on today this is where I spent my money some of you know that I make a lot of French sauces uh, and gravies and stuff so I invested in a saucier's pan so a saucier's pan is designed this one's by Moviel which is a French brand uh, quite expensive but because of the amount of sauces and stuff that I make uh, to me it was worth the money so this one it's got a nice wide uh, open mouth that tapers down into the bottom which is great for getting your whisk around for your sauces uh, and stocks it's one of the things you'll notice with this the bottom of it um, is uh, a the bottom of it is a single piece so there's no add-on it's a, a solid uh, pan when you look at something like the chef inox one you can see it's the ring around it so it's got a piece added onto the bottom which a lot of pans do with this one they don't have that it's a continuous solid uh, piece so that's where your money goes into once again it's an absolute brilliant piece of kit if you're looking if you're serious about making sauces etc it's definitely one to think about okay so we'll look at a couple of implements now and some things to, to maybe think about so the first one obviously a good balloon whisk which is great for making your stocks and sauces etc with uh, I also have what's known as a roux whisk so it's for making a uh, roux which is the base for a lot of French sauces equal parts flour and butter it's also uh, good for making sauces and and some gravies now pair of tweezers uh, I've got a pair of long tweezers so I use these for you use them for dressing desserts and and dishes so for um, fine dressing things like herbs and flowers etc and placing them where you need them to be so you can get straight ones like this or you can get uh, offset tweezers which have got a, a bend in the bottom of them and lastly a couple of offset different size offset spatulas so they use these a lot for baking but I also use them for purees and stuff for spreading or shaping purees on the plate a couple of different sizes always very handy to have um, there's a, a few other bits and pieces uh, that I use uh, as well but I thought these are just a couple of the basics it'll sort of give you a bit of an idea
Alrighty, well that's it for the video. I hope it's given you uh, a, a few things to think about. It's uh, always good to sort of uh, have some, some new ideas presented to you about some different cookware options. As I said, just get what you can afford. Um, you don't have to get anything too fancy. Chef Inox, which I use a lot, they're available. You can get those through Harris Scarf and also through Nesbitt's online. Uh, Moviel is available in Australia through uh, Lee and Phillips, uh, who are based here in Melbourne. So have a look at those, they are quite expensive. Uh, the Copper Pan also available through Nisbet's online. Alright, well that's it. I hope this has been of some use and we'll, uh, we'll see you at the next video. Bye.